Patrick, the Merchant of Venice. We both were in a production of this play in 1979, which was uh, extremely special to, to us both and to everyone who was in it. And what, what was it that made it so particularly important to you? You know, at the beginning, I'd turned the part down. I really? Maybe I you didn't know, know that. Mm -hmm. no, no. It was offered as part of a package deal with some other roles, mm. and I had played the part years before, and I thought that the part had uh, no adventure in it. It was a, a role which was entirely fixed inside possibly one or two interpretations, and that you could only either serve a sentimental or a melodramatic purpose mm. with the role. And I didn't want to waste a year at Stratford doing that. It caught up with me, though, and by the time we finished the production, two years later, I was suffering withdrawal symptoms when we weren't performing it. Um, it was a curious experience because it, it was one of those rare opportunities when there was something in the role that touched me emotionally. It doesn't always happen. Very often you have to construct that and artificially create it. But there was something in the man that uh, grabbed me by the throat. Mm. And, uh, and invaded my heart. And, um, and so it was, uh, it was an important journey for me to take. Is there a particular speech that you think that you could use to illustrate the, well, the two classical modes of Shylock? You were just talking about them. Mm. The, yes, the heroic right. and the anti-heroic. And then perhaps something to show the way you chose to do it? Almost anywhere in the play, you could take almost any section mm. of Shylock's out and illustrate it in that way because he has, uh, there is so much tradition attached to the role that these two basic interpretations have uh, invaded every area of the play. Do you remember when we opened, one of the reviewers began his review by saying there are two ways of playing Shylock in The Merchant oh, of yes, Venice. Yes, one right. is the wolvish, murderous, bloodthirsty dog Jew and the other is the noble, suffering, dignified member of a persecuted race. And, uh, and then ignored what we had done. Yes, totally. Yes, all right. There's a, one speech in Act 1, Scene 3, when, Anto when uh, Shylock is talking to Antonio and Bassanio, who have been discussing with him the subject of a loan. All right, then. Will you have a crack at that? You bet. Shylock, uh, in this scene, is very exposed. It's um, a public scene for him. And he's face to face with two people who have confessed their dislike for him. If uh, you, the, the interpretation that Shylock, uh, that the actor chooses for Shylock in that scene, is going to mark itself on the rest of the play because this is f his first scene and one of his very earliest speeches. First of all, the uh, noble, dignified Jew, one of the traditional approaches to Shylock. Signor Antonio, many a time and oft in the Rialto you have rated me about my monies and my usances. Still have I borne it with a patient shrug, for sufferance is the badge of all our tribe. You call me misbeliever, cutthroat dog, and spit upon my Jewish gabardine, and all for use of that which is mine own. Well, then, it now appears you need my help. Go to, then. You come to me and you say, Shylock, we would have monies. You say so, you that did void your room upon my beard and foot me as you spur a stranger cur over your threshold. Monies is your suit. What should I say to you? Should I not say, hath a dog money? Is it possible a cur can lend 3,000 ducats? Or should I bend low and in a bondman's key with bated breath and whispering humbleness say this, fair sir, you spat on me on Wednesday last. You spurned me such a day. Another time you called me dog. And for these courtesies I lend you thus much monies? The other traditional interpretation of Shylock is Shylock the monster, the villain, the character that uh, dominated the 18th and 19th century stage as um, a melodramatic figure of horror and terror. Signor Antonio, 
Many a time and oft in the Rialto you have rated me about my monies and my usances. Still have I borne it with a patient shrug. For sufferance is the badge of all our tribe. You call me misbeliever, cutthroat dog, and spit upon my Jewish gabardine, and all for use of that which is mine own. Well then, it now appears you need my help. Go to them. You come to me and you say, Shylock, we would have monies. You say so. You that did void your room upon my beard and foot me as you spur a stranger cur over your threshold. Money's is your suit. What should I say to you? Should I not say, have a dog money? Is it possible a cur can lend 3,000 ducats? Or should I bend low and in a bondman's key with bated breath and whispering humbleness say this, fair sir? You spat on me on Wednesday last. You spurned me such a day. Another time you called me dog. And for this courtesy, I'll lend you thus much monies. Well, there are a lot of other alternatives. Many, many more choices than that. And no one of them is necessarily the right choice. But something in that speech that attracted me, not only in that speech, in the entire role, was the humor in the part. When I'd first been asked to play the part, the, the director had in fact said to me that he wanted to have a monster Shylock. But I insisted that he had to be a funny monster Shylock and then it would be acceptable to me. That speech is loaded with irony and ambiguity and with uh, so many elements of mockery. It is Shylock's method of self-defense. Humor can act as a protective... Um, armor against the pain and hurt that he feels from their cruelty and uh, bitterness. And so it seemed to me that it would be interesting to see how humor could be used both as a weapon and as a uh, form of protection. <coughs> Signor Antonio, uh, many a time and oft in the Rialto you have rated me about my monies and my usances. Still have I borne it with a patient shrug, for sufferance is the badge of all our tribe. You call me misbeliever, cutthroat dog, and spit upon my Jewish gabardine, and all for use of that which is mine own. Go to it then. Well, it now appears you need my help. You come to me and you say, Shylock, we would have monies. You say so. You, that did void your room upon my beard and foot me as you spur a stranger cur over your threshold. Money is your suit. <laughs> what should I say to you? Uh, should I not say, um, have a dog money? Is it possible a cur can lend 3,000 ducats? Or should I bend low and in a bondman's key with bated breath and whispering humbleness say this? Oh, uh, fair sir, you spat on me on Wednesday last. You spurned me such a day. Another time you called me dog. And for these courtesies, I lend you thus much monies. <laughs>